Good afternoon and welcome to Volunteering Victoria's webinar series. I'm Sarah Sterling, our Sector Development Manager, and I'm excited to be back for our webinar series in 2020. This time we will be talking about involving international students in your volunteer program. Before I go further, I'd like to acknowledge that though we are likely logging on from different parts of Australia, I would like to acknowledge and pay my respects to traditional owners all across the land which we call Australia. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. So I have just a few housekeeping notes before I introduce our guests. And I say guests, cause this week we have three of them. How exciting. In the interest of all other listeners, please keep yourself on mute throughout the webinar. You should have all arrived on mute, but you should be able to check down the bottom by hovering your mouse over the screen. There's a public chat box, which will send messages or hellos to all participants. So feel free to introduce yourself. But if you have a question, we'd ask that you submit it through the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen, and we'll raise it with the presenters at the end of the webinar. If you're having technical troubles, please either use the public chat box or the Q&A, and we'll try and assist you with the technology. This webinar will be able to down, will be available to download on Volunteering Victoria's website, probably by middle of next week. Please stick around as I'll make a few Volunteering Victoria announcements at the end of the webinar. So without further ado, let me introduce my three guests. Emma Last is the Partnerships and Engagement Coordinator at Study Melbourne. Emma works across student experience investments of the Victorian government including the Study Melbourne Student Centre, the International Student Welfare Program and the Live Employability Programs. She's worked extensively in mental health, family violence and creative arts sectors to design and deliver programs that create positive social change. Emma holds qualifications in art, social work and family therapy. Ian Finlayson is the Development Manager at the Melbourne Writers' Festival. Prior to joining Melbourne Writers' Festival, Ian was business manager at Il Bijeri, Australia's leading longest running First Nations theatre company. Ian has worked extensively on community cultural development projects and events in Australia and the UK. Ian is also on the board of Woor Dungan, a peak body established to build stronger relationships between the Victorian Aboriginal community controlled organisations and philanthropy. He is currently completing an MBA at Monash, Monash Business School. And finally, Susan McLean. Susan is Visitor Services Volunteer Coordinator at State Library Victoria. Susan designed and developed and leads the Volunteer Creators Program. Susan has been at the library for 12 years, during which time she has managed many large-scale projects, including working with vulnerable groups. She's currently completing a PhD on the subject of bibliotherapy. She loves the volunteering sector. So Ian, Emma and Susan, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. So um, before we get into the nuts and bolts of uh, today's topic and involving international students, I'd first love it if you could tell me a little bit about, uh, tell everyone uh, online a little bit about yourself and your organisation, which is always where we start in these Volunteering Victoria webinars. So I'll throw to you first, Emma. Thank you. So I work at Study Melbourne, and Study Melbourne's a Victorian government program to support all international students studying in Victoria. And it's the, the way that the government says thank you to all the students for choosing to study in Victoria. And in return for coming to Victoria, we offer free support. We've got a Study Melbourne Student Centre, a hub for all international students in Hardware Lane in Melbourne CBD. And it's here that students can get face-to-face -face support, counselling, legal services. They can do professional development workshops and attend social events. The centre's a great place to meet friends and study and connect with services. And all of our services are free and confidential, staff are friendly and multilingual. And um, we offer employability programs and welfare grants to organisations in the community. And we design programs that create lots of community connections for international students. So a wealth of knowledge in terms of international students yep. and uh, their experience here in Melbourne there. So I'll throw to you, Anne. Thanks. So um, 
as Sarah said, my name's Ian and um, my background is in cultural community development within the arts. Um, and I've been at Melbourne Writers' Festival for the past year. Uh, so Melbourne Writers' Festival, many of you I'm sure will have heard of it. It's um, Victoria's annual celebration for writers, readers and thinkers. Um, we label ourselves as Australia's boldest literary festival. Um, and MWF has been around for more than 30 years and we showcase the best writers from Australia and around the world. Um, and we do that through discussions, debate, storytelling, performance, and we also have a dedicated schools program that runs um, during the festival as well, specifically for schools and students. Uh, it's a 10 day festival uh, and we challenge, inspire and uh, delight our audiences uh, of around 55,000 people each year. Yes certainly an incredible reach in terms of people in Victoria. So finally, Susan. Thank you, Sarah. So I'm Susan and I work at the State Library. I've been there 12 years now and I love working in what I think I'm a bit biased, but I think a lot of people would agree the most beautiful building in Melbourne, if not Australia. It's certainly one of the most visited buildings and especially now with our beautiful spaces that have been re redeveloped and opened at the end of last year. But we are the fourth most visited library on earth, which I think is amazing. And we have an average of 2 million people visiting through the doors each year and a whole lot more online. So we're very busy and our visitors are very, very diverse. So including a lot of international students, which really use the library as their, their kind of community library because so many of them live in the CBD. Many of them prefer to study at the library instead of their uni libraries as well, which I can understand because it's such a wonderful space. But we have a lot of international students use the library, so it kind of made sense to have them as part of our um, greeted program as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. And wow, what a reach. Two million people uh, on average per year. And I certainly had a few late night study sessions at the State Library when <laughs> I was at university. I think that's a shared Melbourne experience. So one of the things we also like to talk about at the start of our webinars before we get uh, to the nuts and bolts of the topic is asking how people got involved in volunteer management or particularly uh, being involved uh, with international students in this particular setting um, because often volunteer managers a common theme is that there is a you know variety of pathways into volunteer management so i might um throw to ian first to talk a little bit about how you got stumbled across volunteer management <laughs> so um as i said earlier i've always worked in the arts worked for lots of different festivals um and generally um, those kind of organisations and those kind of events do rely on volunteers in order to be able to deliver their programs with the really limited resources um, that are available. Um, so for me personally, um, previously, I worked on the Other Film Festival, which is a um, disability film festival run by Arts Access Victoria, and I was the volunteer manager there. Um, but now at MWF, um, I actually work in a more broad role that looks after a range of our partnerships and ensures that we have the support needed to be able to deliver the festival. Um, so as I mentioned, MWF is a really large festival and we really require um, volunteers to be able to deliver that festival. Um, as part of our strategic plan, we're really focused on um, diversity and inclusion across all areas of the festival. Um, and so in relation to the volunteer program, that means a focus on recruiting volunteers from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds, um, both to provide valuable experiences for the entire community and to provide a welcoming and supportive environment for our audiences. Um, specifically international students, we actually came to engaging international students through Study Melbourne. Um, we had worked with them for a number of years um, on a international uh, student storytelling competition. 
um, so that competition has engaged hundreds of international students in creating um, stories about their experiences of living in Melbourne um, and then thousands of their friends and family members um, read those um, stories that we host on our website and they vote um, for their favourite stories and then during the um, festival we host an award ceremony where um, we announce both the People's Choice winner as well as a range of prizes um, that have been decided by our judges. Um, that competition has been really successful um, and was really enthusiastically embraced by um, the international student community. Um, and so for us, it showed that um, there was really a hunger from international students to be involved in uh, a significant cultural event like MWF. And that kind of fueled our desire to look for other ways that we can engage international students in what we do. Wonderful. Um, so, Susan, how did you find volunteer management as, of, you know, stumble upon it as many of us in the sector do? Well, I think looking at, firstly, um, thinking about it, um, it became a, a project within the library. So, um, we're actually made up of 23 buildings, which people may not realise when they're in when they're in the space, but it's it's a navigational challenge to walk around the space. We have so many services within them. So one of our surveys revealed um, how many of our visitors, especially because we have so many visitors who have English as not as their first language, and how they were really struggling to navigate and um, understand all of our services. So that's there came a point where it was decided that this was going to become a project. And out of that, um, as, a, as I was saying, I've, I've uh, managed quite a few large projects at my time there. So this was a project that was given to me. So with um, my kind of pro, I came to it with project management hat on really, and um, then designed you know, how we would look at this challenge and this grew out of it. So. Um, one of the things that we really noted was um, the amount of international students that use the library and the importance of that becoming such a community space for them. And some of my other projects, I've worked with vulnerable people. So I was able to bring my thinking around that into developing the program. And it's been wonderful for international students. Now when they come in, they actually see it from your face welcoming them into the library. So that's been a very, very successful part of it. Oh, it's fantastic. It, you know, develops out of a need, but, you know, we've spoken previously about how uh, sort of engaged you are with the volunteers themselves. So what started as a project has become a living, breathing program of people and relationships, which is fantastic. So to set the scene a little bit, um, I'll throw to you, Emma, just to give a little bit of context around international students and Melbourne, because I think that's often a good place to start in terms of uh, organisations that might be keen to involve international students, but maybe don't know where to start or maybe don't know what their experience is here in Melbourne. Yeah, well, I think that um, uh, really the the international students that we have in our community, it really does kind of build on that foundation that we have around being a multicultural community. And um, it's, it's often really interesting for people to know that in Melbourne or in Victoria, we have over 227,000 students enrolled um, every year. The numbers of international students increase every year by 10% or more. And really, um, international students, well, they call themselves internationals. They are part of a very thriving and dynamic group of young people that we have in our community. So at Study Melbourne, we talk about one in seven of the youth population in Victoria being an international student, and one in five residents in the CBD are international students. Um, I've I've been working in this sector for just over two years and I, I absolutely love working with international students. They um, come from all parts of the globe and I feel like it enriches my engagement with my community. Um, and where I sit at Study Melbourne, we're part of Global Victoria 
and it really does make you think about yourself very much as a citizen of the world when you start engaging with international students. They volunteer for a range of reasons and um, everyone's got a slightly different reason, but often people are really keen to meet other people in the community, so looking for social connection. People are looking for career skills. Um, some people volunteer because they like to be led into different geographical parts of the city that you might not otherwise go to. Um, many people are from cultures where caring for others is a really big part of community connection. So um, many students are drawn to caring roles. Um, people really enjoy giving back to the community. A lot of people feel like when they come to Melbourne, people help them to get set up and they want to give back to the community. And of course, many people just want to improve their English. The largest number of students that we have in our community are from China, probably if you think of it roughly as a third of students from China and then from India, that's very rough. There are the majority from China, then India, but we have um, students really from over 170 countries around the world. So engaging with them is a, a great way to find out more about yourself, your organisation and your community. Yeah, that's some really powerful statistics, particularly when you think of one in five of the CBD residents are actually international students. It really makes sense that the two programs we have here in the room that are so city based, um, you know, are really engaging with this population that is a major piece of the, the population. Pretty staggering. So now back to you, Emma, again, just to talk a little bit um, I think sometimes it can be easy not to put yourself into people's shoes. So it might be worth unpacking some of the barriers that international students, despite all of what you went through just now about wanting to get, you know, having all these motivations to volunteer, what barriers they might face in getting involved. Yeah, sure. So um, at Study Melbourne, we run volunteering programs. So we know students are really keen to volunteer. Some of the difficulties that they, or some of the barriers that they might encounter are that they, they don't know where to get information or where to find information from about volunteering opportunities. Um, students um, find it really difficult to navigate um, networks and pathways. It's like when we, when we talk about volunteering organisations, we know what a Salvation Army is or, you know, what um, you know, particular organisations are, but students just don't know that when they come here and they don't know how to start to find out about places. Um, some students have, have poor confidence. They, they worry about their level of English. And also, um, in some cultures, it's not the done thing to initiate relationships. Um, they're uncertain of, um, I guess, how to progress a relationship with an organisation. Some students might not understand legal requirements like getting a police check or a working with children's check. Um, for some students, providing a CV can be a barrier, um, particularly CV um, in English. Um, an interview process, the formality can sometimes feel intimidating for students. Um, Students have particular um, visa requirements and work requirements when they come here. And sometimes for them understanding how many hours of volunteer work they can do, um, that can be difficult. Um, yeah, understanding which kind of organisations to work with. Um, and I guess just in terms of that reciprocal relationship I think for some organisations, it might be difficult for them to, to really be mindful of those barriers that students come with and to really sort of hang in there and, and understand the kind of level of communication that perhaps students might um, require support with. Wonderful. That's really helpful uh, in terms of understanding the barriers um, that international students might face. Um, so now I'm going to throw to Susan and Ian to talk a little bit about their programs, but I just did want to note that Volunteering Victoria runs state awards and particularly has one 
award that is focused on, uh, you know, including groups who may not traditional, who may traditionally face barriers for getting involved. And both of the organisations sitting in the room with me actually won that uh, award back to back around inclusion, particularly for their efforts with uh, international students. So we are sitting with uh, people with some great amounts of knowledge in this area. So Susan, I'll just get you to maybe uh, go through the program set up for the creators and um, you know just give us a bit of a, a program overview if you're happy. Was, um, they were really great points you know, and lots of things you do need to think about when you're designing the program. So we, we kind of started from the place of two core needs and one was the rapid growth in the library visitation and the change in our visitor demographic. And then the second core need we felt was an emergent, emergent issue around international students who have been reporting increasing isolation and loneliness. And we wanted to, um, we felt really that the library's proximity to where a lot of their uni campuses are, where they live, where they come to study, come to research. Um, we're really a hub for them. So we wanted to position it well to address the social issues that they face. So underpinning the Breeders Program, the guiding principles of care, community and growth. And we, we really try to work creatively with that, with our work, not just with international students, because we have more than international students in the program, but that supports international students and how they, how they really um, start to live in this new city. So, do you did you want me to talk a little bit about the um, kind of the way we designed it, or or just the, the, the brief like? The just a bit of an design. overview of, of, of what it looks like. So I, I guess that, you know, obviously volunteers are situated in key points in the library. They are. And they keep, the key things, part of their role is that they provide directions. As I was saying, it's very challenging to navigate yourself around the library. So they often will take our visitors to where they want to go. So that's a really key part of their role. So they're very mobile. And they, um, the, the other key part of their role is to welcome people, both as they enter and exit the building. So to improve the visitor experience. And for many visitors, one of the common things that we hear all the time, and, and even this is the reason why some greeters choose to be greeters, is a lot of people come into the foyer, it's so imposing, especially before it was redeveloped, and they turn around and walk out. They don't know whether they have to pay to come in. They don't know if they're allowed to come in. And we often catch people doing that even now. So it's, and then when they, they can even be spoken to in their own language, it's amazing the difference right from the start that makes to someone's visit. What a difference, absolutely. Like, I'm sure we've all felt that feeling of intimidation and the difference that a friendly voice or hearing language uh, that you're more familiar with uh, can make in terms of making a space welcoming. So I'll throw to you Ian now, if you could give an overview of how volunteer international students are involved in the Melbourne Writers Festival, mm -hmm. that'd be great. Cool. So as I mentioned earlier, um, volunteers are essential to allowing us to deliver the festival and to service our guests. Um, MWF has a core team of six staff um, so it's impossible for six people to look after 55,000 visitors and 400 writers. Absolutely. <laughs> um, over, over the 10 days of the festival. So every year we recruit about two to 300 volunteers um, and they do an average of three shifts each over the 10 days of the festival. The roles um, that those volunteers undertake, our biggest team is our volunteer support team, oh, sorry, our venue support team. Um, and they do tasks like ushering, checking tickets, wayfinding, and queue management. Um, we also have a box office team who sell tickets and answer questions both in person and over the phone. Um, they actually, the box office volunteers start earlier than any of the other volunteers. They start seven weeks before the festival um, when we start selling tickets. Um, and the artist care 
volunteers. They meet artists at the airport or at the hotel. They walk artists to their sessions from the green room. They staff the green room and answer artists' questions and provide food and beverage service for our writers. Um, and yeah, that includes, um, you know, we have a coffee machine and a whole lot of hospitality functions for the artists in the green room. Uh, and then the final group of volunteers we have are drivers. So those volunteers drive artists from the airport to the hotel, uh, from the hotel to the venues, and that can also include driving to local libraries across Greater Melbourne and also in regional Victoria. Um, those volunteers do require an Australian driver's license, so that's probably where we have the least um, international volunteers. Um, our program consistently receives really high feedback, uh, positive feedback from volunteers, and we have many volunteers that return year after year. Um, some of our volunteers have been volunteering with the festival for more than 30 years, so um, I think they know the festival better than we do in many cases. <laughs> That's impressive. Um, specifically for our um, international volunteer program, we actually ran it as a pilot program um, for the first time in 2018. We've always had a lot of um, local students who volunteer, um, and this was a, this was a specific program that we ran to try and get more international students um, involved as well. Uh, and it was a successful pilot in 2018, so we ran it again. Uh, last year as well. Um, and we really envisage it as being a rewarding experience for international students. Um, as Emma mentioned, somewhere that you can practice English, somewhere that you can build networks and friendships. Um, just to be part of a major arts event in Melbourne is really special for a lot of the international student volunteers. Um, and it also gives them an opportunity to meet Australian writers and gain a really unique insight into Australian culture. Um, and, you know, we already have a lot of partnerships with universities, just given the kind of work that we do. So it really leverages those partnerships and allows us to have a deeper engagement in that way. So we had a target in the first year of 10% um, of our volunteers would be international students, which we reached. And so then last year we targeted 20%, which we also reached. So that was really exciting. What a way to really reflect the demographic of a city. There you go, 20% is one in five. <laughs> You're bang on. <laughs> um, so I think you guys have kind of, um, I guess, highlighted why it was important specifically for both of your programs to involve international students. So I think it would be um, interesting for those on the other end of the webinar to understand how you designed uh, your programs. Uh, so I'll throw to you, Susan, to talk a little bit about how it was designed with the particular considerations of international students in mind. So our program is about a year and a half old now. And we've always looked at our volunteers as program partners. So they kind of have equal ownership over the program design and the outcomes. So we've done that right from the start. We have um, a culture of feedback and we regularly have greeter meetings. We have a Pacific Chinese greeter group. We have um, a large cohort of Chinese greeters because we have such a large visitation of Chinese visitors. And together the greeters created their own service standards. So we call this created by and for the greeters. They are involved in um, every stage and often they lead um, different aspects as we're developing things as well. So um, different ones will take on small projects within it. So at this stage, they are volunteering on the floor in greeter shifts, but they're also doing volunteering program support as well. So the greeter service standards have been particularly important. It's really how we run our program, how we train during induction, and we even bring it in during recruitment. So greeters will come into, we run group interview sessions, they'll come into the group interviews and they'll talk to applicants who are interested in becoming greeters and tell them about their experiences, but also talk about the greeter service standards and how we work. So really everything we do revolves around the greeter service standards and that, that shapes the greeters program. So from recruitment and sustainability, it's ongoing. 
Um, we also run a program for well-being of breeders as well, and the breeders are involved in that themselves. So we um, we have that um, for international students. Is we have a separate group for them, and they just decide what sort of areas they want support in, and that's built into the program as well. They we we have work with international students to build our own knowledge. They support us so much in developing. We have Chinese Word of the Week, which they teach us. They teach us how to greet when it's lunar Chinese Lunar New Year. They teach us how to use our hands. It's just amazing how much they love teaching us. And building that into the program is really important. We build it in in other ways too. We'll share food and things like that during our meetings. But making sure that they know what they bring in is highly valued and we use it. The culture of feedback is very important and we've developed that right from the start. And that has to come from me down. So I get lots of feedback. Sometimes it's hard and I have to, you know, thanks for that. And always make sure I take it on and build it into the program. So they see lots of changes and it's always acknowledged every week when we have our update anything you were bringing in, whose idea it was, and let them own all of the ways that we develop the program. Sounds incredibly empowering and a really safe space to, to share culturally. I think there's a really good example of, of designing with, not for, which I think is really important. So Ian, if you want to talk a little bit about how your program was designed, also the specific international yeah. stream. Yeah. So we actually um, didn't go into this process knowing that we wanted to design an international student volunteering program. As I mentioned earlier, we'd run the international student storytelling competition and we wanted to look at other ways to engage international students. Um, and we were we run an internship program um, at the festival every year where um, students as part of their course um, at uni do an internship with um, Melbourne Writers Festival. So we get a lot of students who are studying publishing or um, arts and cultural management that has an intern component of their um, study. And we had an um, international student from Melbourne Uni um, who was part of that internship program about three years ago. Um, and as part of her um, uni work, she had to do a research project on Melbourne Writers Festival um, alongside her internship. And she came to us asking what, what we were interested in researching and what she could contribute. And we said, well, actually, we really want to look at what are some other ways that we can um, engage international students. And so she did a really thorough um, research project where she interviewed international students and she got focus groups together and um, through that process actually designed um, what became our international um, student volunteer program. Fantastic. So again, involvement from an international student really yeah. leading that voice and both so both herself and her own experience, but also um, in, she engaged with lots of other international students to get their feedback and input as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. And again, I think feeding into the needs of both the program and, and the demographic that it's trying to serve is really, really important. So again, before we um, talk specifically about different parts of the volunteer life cycle, um, I wondered if you could each just pull out some of the benefits to your program, but also to international students for being involved in your program specifically. And we'll keep it brief because we've talked a little bit about the benefits to students volunteering and the barrier, like, and, and why you started these programs. So presumably there's a little bit of overlap, but Ian, if you wanted to um, just name some of the benefits specifically for international students and specifically why you target them. Um, I think, well, as we've, we've covered some of these already, but really um, to get that kind of often a first um, volunteering experience for many of our international student volunteers is their first time being involved in anything like this. Um, and I think you know, being a 10 day festival is actually a great little kind of bite sized volunteering opportunity without having to put in too much commitment. Um, 
work skills and also um, social networks within Melbourne, as well as being able to um, practice English. Definitely the feedback that we've got from volunteers actually identifies that a lot of the time, while those are all important, also just being involved in a big cultural event is really exciting in a new city um, and being able to see um, and kind of get a hands-on experience of Australian um, culture and meeting Australian writers and artists is, re is a real um, driver for international students volunteering with us. How about you, Susan? There's so many. I'm going to do three. <laughs> Excellent. So I think exposure and experience in the Australian work culture is very, very important where they're improving their communication skills and building their confidence. And um, they get a um, certificate for training in visitor services and cultural competencies through the, our training. But seeing their confidence grow, it, it's absolutely amazing with the international students. One. I'll give one example, who was so shy and quiet, and now at Uni Melbourne, she is on the board as the uni, uni um, rep for international students. Just you see their confidence grow and grow and grow. I think loneliness is very key, and they talk, they call it their greeter family, so I don't think I need to say anything else about that. A sense of belonging, and I certainly think what Ian was saying, to something big, especially like the Melbourne Writers Festival is big, the State Library is big, it gives them a sense of belonging and a really good place, I think, um, is a way to settle into the community. One thing I love, and I'm sure you would see this too, Ian, is how proud they are to tell people about the State Library or the Writers mm -hmm. Festival. It's amazing to see how proud they are. I love that. It, it, every time I experience it, it always, always gives me a tingle. Absolutely. And I think both are such huge cultural institutions to say I've been involved in something with as incredible reach as both of you know, your programs have is pretty special. Mm -hmm. And particularly walking past that iconic building to say I work there, I know all the I know what's good coffee or uh, whatever, as we Melbourneites talk about, is incredibly powerful, you're right. And, and we've also had a kind of natural, um, I guess, first person inter internationalization where, um, you know, we've had some international student volunteers from India, for example, who've actually previously volunteered at the Jaipur Literature, Literature Festival. Um, and we've also had, um, international volunteers who've ended up sending us books by writers from um, their home country that they're like, oh, you guys should definitely read this book and think about having them in the program. So it's a really good kind of international collaboration on that very kind of individual level. That's fantastic. So in terms of like starting at the start of the volunteer life cycle, um, recruitment can be a huge, um, a huge concern. Uh, for many uh, organisations and there are special considerations when it comes to recruiting international students. I guess I'll ask uh, uh, you, Susan, first, what have been the huge considerations when um, setting up your recruitment um, and what have you kind of learnt along the way? Um, there's certainly things that I think you can consider to make it easier for international students. So we have a very flexible, because it's an ongoing program, we create a very flexible roster where they choose when they work, um, so long as they do equivalent to one shift a fortnight, they can choose when that is. So a lot of them will do a whole bunch at once and make sure that they're free during exam time. International students study very hard and to them that's really important during exam time, they just put their head down. I think you need to be understanding of that. Also, they go away for long periods as well. So you have to, when you're recruiting, so for me, recruiting to the program, that's why we have more than international students, because if we only had international students, we wouldn't have a program during certain times of the year. And so having that mix is really nice. And but I think making sure that you build that in because that is certainly something that will happen with them. 
we made sure that we um, allow them to have email references so that it's not limited to time zones. And um, we build into the, and this is why we do group interviews, we build in for English as second language and cultural differences. So very clearly at the start, we put out the expectations that um, our applicants with English as first language, we have different expectations to make sure they're including the others in there. So very clear that, that um, we're not expecting them all to be acting the same way in an interview. I think that takes a lot of pressure off them. But it also makes our locals realise that sometimes they're not without meaning to be inclusive enough. So they need, we are watching them to make room for our international students. So that's a change in our staff perspective. I've trained quite a lot of our front of house staff to be evaluators in the group interviews. And sometimes at the start, I'd say, this person's too quiet. And I'd say, but who's on the table? Who's not offering them to come into the conversation? So that's been a little bit of a, a mind shift, but making sure that, that they have opportunity to, but also letting them know we're going to create opportunity for you to contribute. You don't have to say much, just say something, even if it's hello to everybody else. I need to do that to make sure they can understand instructions as well. So we build in the selection criteria questions into the application form. We don't ask for CVs in that way. And um, I, I want to see in the group interviews the things that I'm really looking for, like making sure they understand the instructions, which door to turn up to, what time, and um, that they kind of then can take part in the group, they understand enough to take part in the group. And very much then you can see if they're warm people, want to help other people and welcome other people. So really observing rather than getting them to answer too many questions. Absolutely. And I think uh, just that very question around group interviews versus individual interviews and the confidence to speak up and what it takes to speak in front of a group. Many people who have English as their first language uh, feel terrified to speak in front of a whole group of people. So um, acknowledging that people come from a different place, uh, particularly when English is uh, the second language is, is a really important distinction. But some of us might think, group interviews, bulk volunteer recruitment, of course we'll do it in that way, but it creating a climate where everyone feels comfortable uh, that they have something to contribute is, is really important. And tell, telling them how much we value the languages that they're bringing in, you know, they start to see that, that they're off, they have something to offer. Absolutely, it's an asset. Mm -hmm. How about you, Anne? Are there particular uh, things that you consider in relation to international student recruitment? Yeah, so um, I think, so our international student volunteer program is obviously part of a much larger volunteer program, but we run really, it's, we run really dedicated um, support around engaging international students. Um, so some of the things that we do is that we run dedicated information sessions for international students. Um, often they will be on campus at um, universities um, and that's an opportunity for the international students to learn about the opportunity. They get to hear from past volunteers, ask questions of our staff. Um, so it will generally consist of a short presentation from MWF staff about the organisation. Um, and then a more in-depth presentation from the volunteers coordinator about the different roles, the application process, just kind of understanding how it all works. Um, I think it's important not to assume um, that people will have volunteered for a festival before, understand how your organisation operates. Um, and yeah, also hearing from past volunteers, particularly if it's an international student volunteer, um, so they get a first-hand understanding of know what that student got out of it, some of the challenges and fears that they had and that, you know, they're not alone if they feel a bit anxious or nervous about getting involved. Um, we find that international students do need that little bit of extra confidence to apply and they sometimes even need someone to actually work through the application with them. 
Um, and often we'll do that at the information session itself, or they can call our volunteer coordinator and um, he can help them over the phone. Um, we use a lot of existing services and networks to promote the opportunity. So that includes Study Melbourne, um, universities, TAFE providers, English language colleges. Um, there's some really active international student kind of Facebook and social media groups um, and kind of the clubs and societies on campus as well. Um, we definitely found that unfortunately, um, some international students do have an experience of being exploited in Australia. Um, and so um, we definitely want we, we definitely want students to be confident that this is a genuine volunteering experience and that there's no exploitation involved. It's a definitely a two way process. Um, and we find that actually um, working with universities is a really good way to build that trust um, because students are looking for high quality volunteering experiences and they trust the university to recommend um, legitimate ones. Um, but I guess just to be aware that when working with universities in that way, like sometimes the verification or um, coordination times can be quite long. So you need to make sure you um, structure that into your recruitment process. Um, yeah, and as much as you can use kind of existing networks, um, whether, it's just, whether it's through students themselves or through their lecturers, um, that kind of first person recommendation is really useful. Um, in, in kind of getting international students confident to apply. Awesome. Um, and just a reminder to those online, we have uh, a few more questions, but if you have any questions for um, any of our panelists, um, please do type them into the chat box or the Q&A box now. Um, so you've both briefly touched on it, but um, I guess I was hoping you could uh, call out any particular additional support that you've provided to international students above and beyond sort of more traditional volunteers um, you know you know to help them create community or um, you know access reference or language support etc i'll throw it back to you Anne. yeah so um we, as i said we run the dedicated recruitment process and the information sessions we um increased um we used to have a full-time volunteer coordinator and a part-time kind of assistant coordinator. Um, but in doing this program, we actually um, increased them to both be full-time positions so that there was a little bit of extra time available to um, provide that support and engagement, both in the recruitment process and then during um, the festival itself to provide extra support. Um, we offer reference letters to all of our volunteers and that's um, I think quite important and something that international student volunteers really value to kind of um, show that they've had that kind of local work experience and that they've been involved and have been successful. Um, yeah. No, that's great. And, you know, really um, solid pieces of additional support. How about, how about you, Susan? Well, we, we do various things within the group really. Um, we do provide reference letters and things like that, but we also have a guideline around that. They've got to have been in the program a certain amount of time or have done a certain amount of sheets to be able to get that and that's certainly available to them. We, we do lots of um, um, different training if they want it. So we, we, have, um, we have little modules like how to be a mentor. So when we have new breeders come in, they mentor the the, um, they're mentored by the breeders that have been in the role. We have um, a really wonderful Facebook group, um, group for the breeders and it's very, very active and there's continual support and help on there. And they will post up a whole range of things. I'll post up jobs that might be relevant to, especially for the international students up there. Um, workshops that might be on around Melbourne that would support, but they post up amazing things themselves and it's a very, very active network. But one of the things that I've found quite interesting that they seem to love, they love going around and visiting other places and posting up about that and things that sometimes perhaps we don't think about how important it is, but say going out to Hillsville Sanctuary and seeing some of 
Australian wildlife and things, they find that really exciting and amazing. So setting up, um, we set up a lot of activities. We have what we call a streetist group where we go out and so hit the green is hitting the streets. But we go oh, out like and, that name. <laughs> well, they, they thought of it. So we, we go out and visit another cultural institution and we'll often have a tour by them and learn a bit more so we can recommend our visitors to go visit them. And but we'll go and we'll eat in certain places or we'll but we had a cricket match on Australia Day up in Flagstaff Gardens and one of our breeders from Pakistan taught everyone, you know, a few moves and things like that. And we'll do barbecues and think, things that we might sometimes take for granted that I find the international students just love and embrace. So they're, they're always teaching each other and growing in that way. We have, um, we also have um, a group for the international students where they do things like, um, we have someone come in and volunteer pronunciation workshops. So they, they say, this is what we want help in. So we, we've um, had meditation sessions. We had a meditation session in um, botanical gardens one day. That lots How of beautiful. We had one of our international greeters who came third in Sri Lankan dancing with the stars to teach us some dance moves. So you know, <laughs> like, that, that is a different sort of support. It's something that they really need, being part of something something really fun and interesting to do, getting to know mm -hmm. other people. Really that's, connecting into community. Yeah. That's um, definitely some. So through volunteering with Melbourne Writers Festival, you get your volunteer pass allows you to come and see as much as you want at the festival for free. So obviously that's a real draw as well. Um, and they also get to come along to like the end of festival party and stuff like that. One of the one feedback that we did receive in the first um, in the first year of the program was that the international students did want more social opportunities. Um, so last year we ran, once all the volunteers were being recruited, we ran a international student kind of meet and greet party where they came and had some food and got to meet all the staff. Um, and that was a really good way to welcome them into the organization and also allow them to all kind of meet each other. So they then had more familiar faces once they actually started volunteering. That sense of community is so important when people are kind of living, uh, you know, often alone and, uh, you know, just having someone to go on a long bus ride up to Hillsville Sanctuary is something that can easily be taken for granted, but it's really nice to, to create those friendships and those networks. Mm -hmm. I, I encourage them to come and tell me what they need and then, um, some of them will say, I want to learn about data collection. So I'll let them run the survey, things like that. But I had a couple who wanted to learn more about public speaking. So making sure that they um, feel confident to do it first. I'll do a session with them first, but then bringing them into meetings, even in, when we've got the group interviews going and, and getting them to talk to the others, they seem to really love opportunities like that. That's fantastic. So I'm keenly aware of time because uh, we've got so much to discuss. We've just got a couple more questions um, and then we'll, um, I guess, throw out, to, um, uh, throw out to any questions online. Um, you know, how do you guys, I guess, um, I'll, how do you guys monitor and evaluate the program and, and has there been particular feedback on the effectiveness? And again, we'll keep our answers short and sharp in the interest of those uh, online. Um, so yeah, we do a, a volunteer survey with all of our volunteers um, at the end of the festival. Um, and through that, we're able to capture the experience and feedback of, international, of the international student volunteers um, we use that to improve the program in previous years and um, the example I just gave of more social activities was one of the things that came out of that evaluation. Um, we also put together case studies um, of international students and their volunteering experience that can then be used um, by Study Melbourne to promote, Mel to promote Melbourne as a destination for international students and the kinds of experiences you can have here as well as, I guess, um, encouraging international students to be involved in um, volunteering more generally. Um, yeah, so that's 
that's how we do our evaluation. And I guess just to add to what Ian just said, um, Ian has written up a really good report or very good at collecting data from the um, Writers' Festival, Festival and the programs with students. And we've shared that a lot with, with organisations that are interested in working with international students as volunteers. So those, that information is available to anyone um, via us, probably via you too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. How about you? How have you gauged your program's effectiveness, Susan? Well, we do surveys as well. We, we do one across all of the volunteers, but we also do one across the Greens program as well. Because we've set ourselves up as uh, having a culture of feedback, I have so much feedback. It's it's more probably um, too much than you know what to do. Managing with. that 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 I find, you know, we we have we always you know continuous improvement is very important. And what I find is at the end of each shift, they also put in any comments, but they are always emailing me with um, things that have happened, things that we can change to make it better or add to it or whatever. So often they know that I can't take all these things on. So quite often they'll incorporate themselves, incorporate ways to bring that in themselves. And it's an interviews, of course. You look, because this um, cohort aren't going to stay long term, having exit interviews is very important and I always learn from them as well. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, before we kind of move to final questions, and we'll talk a little bit about retention, because often volunteer programs are kind of predicated on recruiting people for a long period of time. And that is something that um, I know can often be a hesitancy in the sector in terms of really involving international students because, oh, they're going to move on in a year anyway and they're going to disappear when they have their exam period. So I guess I'm really keen to understand um, how you guys approach retention, particularly with international students. And I'll, I'll start with you, Susan, if it's... Well, I think because we're an ongoing program, that is a challenge for me, definitely, and that's why we have a nice mix. But I also... I, so I think you know that a, um, an international student is usually here for four years or if they're doing a master's for two years. And I think a learning for us is we've got to be OK with that. And during that time, what they bring is so valuable that, you know, that's OK, we're just part of the journey. But I also think that because we have quite a, a young cohort as well, that young locals won't stay either. I mean, they want mm -hmm. to experience so many things. They're also studying and everyone's always looking for a job. So I think you've got to really say, well, that's OK. And our recruitment works around that. And the way we run shifts and things work around that. Um, and build that in, I think that that's really important. I think the most important thing is that they want to stay. So they will go away for long periods and quite often if people uh, ex, you know, out of the program for several months, you know, they might not come in back in. So um, having them want to come back in is really important. And the things that you need to think around that I think are key for working with international students. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of our original breeders that started 12, uh, 18 months ago are international students. They're still engaged with the program. So I think that's a, a really a key thing. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. How about you, Ian? Are, th are there particular ways? I know an event works slightly differently yeah. in terms of retention, but you still often want returning volunteers. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, we're really lucky just in the when the festival is in August, that is not during exam period or the kind of end of semester, because I think that would make it really hard to engage students um, and particularly international students. Um, but we have really clear expectations around, you know, we expect um, volunteers to do a minimum of three shifts during the festival. Um, we also do prioritise returning volunteers. So um, we did have, we have had a number of international students that have returned now um, over a couple of years. Um, and that obviously makes it a lot easier if they can really confidently step back into their roles. So we do prioritise. Um, applications and that's part of the application process is to indicate whether um, you're a returning volunteer. 
Um, yeah, so, but we, the other thing I think that we see as well is there are volunteers and international student volunteers as well who go from festival to festival. So there's a lot of festivals in Melbourne and a lot of them have volunteering programs. So um, I think sometimes once you catch the bug, then you start volunteering on more and more festivals, which is really awesome as well. Absolutely. And I think what a what an incredible way to experience a city. Right? Yeah. So that is another thing. You've got an incredibly engaged and highly motivated uh, group of people who want to experience a city. Now, we are uh, running short on time. So I guess I'm just going to ask uh, Susan and Ian and uh, Emma if she would like to answer, though uh, not uh, not mandatory. Just what advice would you have for other organisations and programs wanting to set up an international student volunteer program, but who may be worried or um, may be concerned that they're not going to do that cohort, I guess, justice or adequately meet the needs of international students? I'll throw to you first, Dan. I would say to do your research. Um, as we discussed earlier, make sure you co-design with um, the target community build really strong partnerships that will help you to engage that community and to deliver your program, uh, evaluate and iterate, um, provide dedicated support. And I think maybe most importantly, like make sure that there is a two way benefit for both the organization and for the student. I think that it's, if, if there's, if it's not that two way relationship, then I think it's not very sustainable and it will be really hard to, um, to kind of maintain your program. So really do that thinking about what's in it. Yeah. The give and the get. Yeah. How about you, Susan? Any words of advice? I think what I've seen that works really well is having a mix because the international students want to connect with locals and making sure that the locals are a mixture. It doesn't matter on the ages. It's about the willingness and one comment I get a lot and from our older ones as well is they get excited by seeing Melbourne through the international students' eyes. So I think that that is lovely. You see them taking them under their wing and you see them just sharing so much other things that are really important to them. So that's a great way to kind of provide that support and connection that they're looking for. I think giving them thinking of them as program partners and making sure that they feel some ownership and what they're bringing into the program is really valued is very important. Making sure that you allow time for them to settle, especially the, the uh, first year ones, um, they really have to adapt to their environment and the challenges that they have and understanding what those challenges are very, very important. And also understanding how important study is to them as well. So that's a little bit different than our culture in some, some ways. But one thing is just knowing, working with this cohort, there is so many layers. Just keep looking for them and adapting and seeing something and saying, okay, that's another layer. And you just keep bringing in what you need to to be working with them. Absolutely. So final words, Emma. Yeah, I, I think that um, Ian and Susan are such experts at running the actually implementing programs. I guess what I'd add to that is that at Study Melbourne, we have a grants program. And through that grants program, we've funded organisations like the Melbourne Writers Festival to actually deliver volunteer programs for international students. And we have more information about our grants on our website, which is Study Melbourne. Um, also, there are um, programs that we run, um, internships for international students, um, getting a group of, in, of um, international students to come out to your organisation and work with you for three weeks to look at how could your volunteer programs be extended or um, engage international students is a really great soft way of making a start and getting a bit more intelligence on what to do. Um, international students are a really big and important part of our community. Um, as I said, they're, they're not going away, the population's growing. And um, if you haven't engaged with international students, it is really a great time to, to think about engaging them. And 
um, just to really think about what could your organisation stand to benefit um, from being more culturally, um, just bringing in more cultural diversity into the organisation. Because certainly when I walk around Melbourne, I see people from all different cultures there. And um, it's great to see that learns incorporated in um, programs. Fantastic. So I guess a final shout out for any questions. Uh, we seem to be a bit silent on the on the question line. Any comments or um, feel free to pop it in the chat box or the uh, Q&A box. Um, but I'd really like to thank uh, all three of the presenters for their time today and their expertise. Um, you know, uh, they really have a wealth of knowledge as Emma said um, and Emma as well, in uh, engaging international students and implementing programs that support them really effectively. Um, from a volunteering Victoria perspective, uh, I'd just like to shout out our CPD program is taking applications, our continuing professional development program. So more information can be found on the Volunteering Victoria website. So I'd urge you guys to get involved and register for that if you haven't already. Um, so I'm just noticing, um, thank you all. Um, and thanks for the thank you. We'll, uh, seeing as there don't seem to be any further questions, uh, thank you all and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.